Welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel. I'd like to introduce you to Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to see you, buddy. Good, good. Um, and so um, one of the things that we often find on the forum, um, people talk about on the forum, is that um, they've gone out, they've become very interested in underwater photography. Um, they've gone out, they've spent a pile of money on, on underwater photography gear. Um, they may well have spent some time reading the, the various textbooks and, and, and possibly practicing techniques in the swimming pool or local dive sites or, or wherever. Um, and then they save up the money and they go away on a trip somewhere um, to go and get pictures um, and they're disappointed because they find that they don't really have the photographic opportunities that they hope they'd get um, during the trip um, and so what we're going to propose is that really the best way of making sure that you get those opportunities is by diving with other photographers um, so I know Alex you kind of had some thoughts about and partnerships in diving, which is possibly a good place to start. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with your sentiment that I think one of the best ways to improve the opportunities that you get as an underwater photographer, which really are critical for getting good pictures, is to dive for images. Yeah. And the easiest way to achieve that is to dive with other underwater photographers. And if you don't dive with other underwater photographers, you tend to do standard diving which in terms of an itinerary over, say, a Liverpool week means that you're constantly diving new sites, you're touring the area. And within an individual dive, it means you're being toured around a dive site. Yeah, yeah. And typically the best way to get great pictures is to find the good stuff and stay with it, whether that means on a particular dive or over the course of a week. So you, the more you can dive with the photographers, the better. But it's something that happens. I think there's a lot more benefits that come from it. And I think that's what we should really try and discuss today. Um, something that's always sort of occurred to me is that a lot of very well-known photographers, one of the reasons that they were able to get good and improve quickly is actually they had a really good photographic partner, a, a dive buddy, but a dive buddy both in the water and out of the water to talk photography to. Yeah. And, and two of my, my good friends and who I judge underwater photographer of the year with are Peter Rowlands and Martin Edge, you know, very well-known underwater photographers. But actually both of them really started as, as partnerships. And, um, and I don't think many people sort of remember this, but, you know, um, Peter Rowlands did loads and loads of two man shows with his friend Steve Birchall. They did lots of photography together and presented together. And Martin Edge was, you know, great friends with Bob Robel. And they did a lot of their early photography together. And it really helped both of them become really established on the British scene, both Martin and Peter, because they, they sort of had this regular dive buddy who they were interacting with. Yeah. And I think that, you know, just having a good photographic friend who you can ch exchange ideas with, chat with, show pictures with yeah. is so valuable. And then when you go diving, you've got someone who wants exactly the same style of diving that you do to, to get out of things. Yeah. And I think the, the ability to I think this is the ability to exchange ideas, to discuss um, thoughts or, or, or possibly you know you've got this crazy idea you want to do this and you need someone to actually say well that might work but that probably won't and then mm. also beyond that it also means that when you're in the water you're both automatically kind of aiming towards the same thing because you've discussed this idea and therefore you can get in the water and then make it happen um, you don't have to then re-explain the idea to whoever you're diving with so so you know these partnerships i think are really really powerful um, and i remember you know um the photo idea i had you know, a decade or so ago now is I wanted to come up to Cape and Ray and photograph the VW. Yeah. And for that, uh, you know, it was a time when there weren't good flash triggers around. We were really struggling to make flash triggers work. Yeah. And I had this idea for the shot. And actually, I don't know if it, how well you remember it, but I actually ended up coming up twice. Yes, Because the first time we, we, we went out and did it, couldn't get the shot to work. And that was very much a shot, although it was my shot that became very well known. It was very much a team effort between the two of us to yeah. make that shot happen. Yeah. And, um, you know, this is the shot here. And, you know, it, it's, it was just like this classic, this idea of shooting this very recognizable sh photo subject in a really interesting and unusual way. And I think it highlighted an aspect of British diving that I, I really liked. But that was something that came about between the two of us talking through an idea and then going off on a dive and, and executing that idea. I, together. I just remember that the, the flash triggers was something that I had for caving. Um, mm. And we managed to, you managed to adapt them to a to a housing. So yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were yeah, built. Up. Yeah, it was it was really. I mean, and I think, yeah, but that really came about between the interaction between the servers. Absolutely. I yeah. think the other things that photographers get from from diving and shooting together 
is it allows you to sort of pull some of the, the technical resources, particularly the gear. Yeah. And particularly when you're starting out in underwater photography, you don't own every item of gear. No. Um, actually, the person to be friends with and buddy with is you, because you have everything. <laughs> two of them. Yeah. So that you're yeah. the perfect person to borrow gear from. <laughs> um, but you know, most of us, you know, when you start out, you don't have all the lenses, you don't have all the ports, you don't have all the spare strobe options and strobe arms and things like that. And actually having a good photographic buddy can mean that Okay, one of you says I'm going to buy uh, a, a SMC to use as a for, for my super macro, and the other person goes I'm going to buy a snoot, and yep. then you can share that accessory backwards and forwards. Yep. Um, I think the other thing that you benefit a lot from as well is if the other person has got a piece of equipment ahead of you, they can advise you to make correct choices in terms of purchases, yep. and you know, oh yeah, buy this, yeah, don't buy that. I didn't find it very useful. Yep. Um, so I think those things can really help. I, I, the 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 other th thing is obviously if you've got two people you double the number of ideas so yeah. um you know creativity is every individual is, is is creatively different so so um the fact that you can um combine ideas and, and share ideas and then as i say um plan ideas differently or separately and then put them together makes it, it makes it very very powerful and i think sometimes this is sometimes something that happens within a group as well so it's not only like a buddy team um but oftentimes if you've got a group of photographers that you create this incredible kind of creative fugue where where people go off on tangents and do stuff and and everyone looks at it and think oh that really worked or didn't work as the case may be mm -hmm. and everyone learns a great deal i think you learn a great deal from shooting from within a group environment as well so and i think that's one of the reasons why photographic workshops which, which i run a lot of and you, yeah. you run as well yeah. and photographic group trips for group trips of photographers which wet pixel runs a lot of yeah. um both of those are so popular and it's it's partly because the camaraderie but it's actually you get all these advantages multiplied by the size of the group yeah. and particularly when that group is really international yeah. i think you get exposed to to really different ideas yeah. and i think that's one of the things i'm really proud about about a lot of the trips that we do is we get people from all around the world joining them and a lot of the group trips out there, it's all people who buy their gear from one shop. They all come from the same city um, and they've all got the same idea like your dogs have right now. Yeah, um, yeah. Of, you know, they're, they're, um... <laughs> they're, they're, they're busy telling someone off of coming to borrow some gear, I think. <laughs> I'll just mute my microphone for a minute. But I, and I, I think the best of those group trips is where you have people coming from all different places together and that brings a lot of different ideas together and you get exposed to all these different ideas and when people buy their gear from different camera shops they typically end up with different gear and, and you realize that you know some housings have slightly better you know some manufacturers have better solutions for one thing and then others yeah. and that allows people to push gear in different directions people have different accessories yeah. and i think you're opened up to all those things when you go on these these big group trips the other advantage of course of a group is is that um, and obviously it depends on how the trip is set up but for example on a liverboard trip um liverboards are a means of getting from place to place but frequently as under photographers we don't want to go from place to place we want to find somewhere that's good and then stay there and sometimes that place may only be accessible via liverboard but simply because we have a boat doesn't need mean it needs to move the whole time so again within a group environment you tend to be able to then dictate where the boat goes so you can find somewhere that's productive and stay there and, and work yeah that, work the, the the opportunities that that place offers um when well, you're in a situation, that whole boat booking gives you control of the boat simply yeah. Yeah. And when you're in a situation where you've got divers and uh, who aren't photographers, then they that often oh, there's almost like a conflict between the photographers <laughs> yeah, and, and the divers, and, and you get round all that by 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 operating as a group and 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 block booking the boat um, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I, I, I would I would add to that that I think that a lead trip is better than just a group of friends going together. And I know people say, "Oh, were well, you going to say that because you run trips?" Mm. But I think the advantage of having a trip leader is you have someone who's going to make these decisions yeah. for the benefit of all. Yeah. And if you put it to a vote, you're going to get, if you've got 20 people on the boat, you're going to get 20 opinions yeah. and you're going to have 19 people who are unhappy. Yeah. Whereas if you have a leader who says, this is what I think is best, explains why, generally everyone's like, yeah, I'll go along with that. Yeah. And I think actually you do need a leader in that situation yeah. to give a trip direction. And particularly if that leader's got some photographic expertise, got some insight into the destination, they'll make good choices about getting boats in the right dive sites for the right time of day where the light is and that sort of thing and explain to everyone why we we're going there at, at that time so i think that and, and certainly something i see on my workshops is people like coming back 
not only because they want to learn stuff, but actually they really like the group environment, the way the diving is set up for, sh for shooting. And I think all those things are actually a big reason why the trips are so popular. And it isn't, you know, s simply because you're going on that trip for the workshop. I think when people come the first time, they're going, I want to learn from, from Alex or from Adam or whoever's running the workshop. I think once they've been a few times, they realize actually they learn a huge amount from the other participants. Yeah. They enjoy the company of other photographers yeah. and they enjoy the style of diving that a photographic trip can offer both in terms of the repeatability of the dive site, the diving for images, and the freedom that a photographic trip can give to people underwater. Definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think um, I think that's, that's absolutely right. I think this is the, the big trick is, is one of the, going back to the starting point, saying that rather than, um, than spending money on gear, in some ways you're better off spending money on travel, but spending that money in wisely in ways that are gonna make sure that you get the, the maximum amount of opportunities um, from your from your your trip in order to get good photographs really yeah mm. yeah um so i think that's a pretty good um talk about that um alex where can they see pictures of your destinations that you've, you've taken pictures at um well i would suggest following me on instagram, instagram yeah. on facebook also on twitter if you want to hear me ranting about various conservation <laughs> issues um you can follow me on there I'm, I'm pretty easy to find when you're called alex mustard you you just search that into the, into the type that into the search engine you'll find me pretty quickly that's great um thank you very much for watching i'd like to thank our sponsors of this episode reef photo and video um please feel free to add any comments um to um suggest future topics and um, to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next time.